Hello and welcome back to the Beautiful Things channel. Today you're joining me for another likes video. It's been a little while since I've done one of these um, and I'm certainly not in a position to do them on a monthly basis because I actually really struggled thinking, hmm, what things haven't I shown you already, either in a haul or in a video where I've been out and about doing things. Um, I tend to be a little bit of a creature of habit so I, once I've found something that I like I use it forever um, and it's unusual for me to find new things but this time I have got a few bits and pieces for you. So the first thing that I want to talk to you about is reading. Now I love to read but I don't read. It's something that I'm sure many of you will find you in exactly the same position. Um, busy, 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 go, go, go all the time. If I do sit down to do something of an evening, it tends to be knitting or crochet or watching something on the telly um, or catching up on YouTube videos and I don't tend to read of an evening. When I would like to read of an evening is when I go to bed but Mr. Mac always tends to go to bed before me. Once he's turned all the lights out, that's that. I can't then turn the light on and start reading a book. I also find that although I love thumbing through the pages of a book, I won't just put one in my handbag um, to read when I have five minutes of spare time. So when I am out and about, I do tend to just grab my phone when I've got one of those five minutes. So I decided I was gonna treat myself to a Kindle. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with it because I love that it's making me read. I hate that I'm not buying actual books. Um, I feel even worse about that because some of my very good friends own a bookshop and they can get books, either children's or adult books, and they can get anything I possibly want into stock. And obviously I'm not supporting them by buying books for my Kindle, but I'm reading. And do you know what? I never used to read. So far, as I am recording this, I am halfway through my fourth book of the year, and we are only just hitting the fourth month of the year. And for some of you, you're gonna think, well, that's easy, Claire. But for me, I read one, maybe two books a year, and the only time you'll find me reading is on my sun lounger on my summer holiday. So, I love my Kindle. Now, obviously, it's in a rose gold cover. Um, let me just open it up. I got the Kindle Paperwhite, um, mainly because, as I say, I like to read once Mr. Mac has gone to bed and I need something that's illuminated. So as you can see, this lights up nice and brightly, but it doesn't have a glow about it. So no, it's not like being on an iPad or something like that, because I know you can get the Kindle app for your iPad as well, can't you? But it doesn't have that glow, so it's not like looking at something bright or staring at a screen before you go to sleep. So I'm not finding it's causing me any problems with regards to going to sleep. So I love my Kindle. I will pop a link to my model down below for you, as well as the case that I've got for it. It's a magnetic case, so as soon as it shuts, um, it just shuts the Kindle down, which is really good. And it really, I have to actually really get my fingernail under there to lift it up. It's got a really good snap to it. And it's brilliant. It fits in the tiniest of handbags. Even my little crossbody bag that I um, go up and down to London with or go out on days out with, it fits in there. Um, I went to London the other day with Mr. Mac and we went out for drinks and I had my Kindle in my bag. So on the train, on the way to London and on the way back, I read a book instead of scrolling aimlessly through Facebook. So it's doing good for my social media detox too. So what have I been reading? I absolutely love Chiclet, if I'm honest. It's probably all I like to read. I like something that's just mindless, take your brain out, um, that's got either a happy story to it or something that, you know, pulls at the old heartstrings. And I have been reading the novels that Louise Pentland has written. They're the Wild series. Now she's got another one out in July on the 25th and I'm very much looking forward to that. The first one in the series that I read was Wild Like Me and I started reading that in February. So actually that's a lie. I didn't buy my Kindle until the beginning of February. So I am now halfway through my fourth book and I'm only two and a bit months in. So that's even better. So yeah, Louise Pendleton Wild Like Me is the first in the series. 
And then the second in the series is Wild About the Girl. They're really lovely. It's a really nice book. Um, if you love a good chick lit book, I'm not going to tell you all about it. Just download them or go and buy the real book. Again, I'll put links down below for you. Um, and I can assure you, you will really enjoy them. I cannot wait for her next book to come out. Um, I'm actually a bit sad that it's coming out at the end of July. I would rather it was towards the middle of August and then I could save it for my holiday. Then I went on to read The Single Mum's Mansion by Janet Hogarth. Again, that's a really, really nice book. Um, it's a little bit hippy dippy, um, but also it's just lovely. It's a real good, feel good book. Um, you know, mums unite together. Um, it's a really, really lovely story. I enjoyed that and I got through that really, really quickly. And I've just started, and I'm already 25% of the way through, a book called It Started With A Tweet by Annabelle, which is all about someone who is totally and utterly addicted to social media and obviously makes a bit of a mistake when it comes to Twitter and everything goes all a bit tits up. As I say, that's what I love about my Kindle as well, is just down in the bottom right hand corner, it tells you the percentage of the way you are through the book, which is brilliant because that just eggs me on even more to get finished. I hit 25% last night and I was like, yay, I only started this book this week and I'm already a quarter of the way through, which makes me really happy. What it doesn't do though, which is quite deceptive, when you go to the bookshop and you're looking for a book, you'll look at the spine and you'll think, is that a fat book or a thin book? If it's a thin book, I can probably read it in a few days around the pool. If it's a fat book, it's gonna take me a lot longer. And I think when Kindle put books on their store, they should say whether they're thin books or fat books. Because the single mum's mansion, I suspect, is a fat book. Because that percentage seemed to take a really long while to get to 100. Although I did thoroughly enjoy every page. The next thing I want to show you is some stationery. Now this may not be a new thing to you, and I'm sorry if it's not. I've just discovered it and I love it. Now, I am missing one of these. I have a suspicion that a small person in my house has got it, but I bought myself a pack of three Sharpies. Now, there was a gold one and a silver one, that's the one that's gone walkies, and a copper one. Now, going to my thing about rose gold, I absolutely love it. This pen, let me show you. It's rose gold, it shimmers and everything. I just love it. I don't know that you can actually see the shimmer very well on camera, even if I get it in the sun, no. But it is, it's beautiful. It's a rose gold pen. Be still my beating heart. Now, these come in packs of three. Um, I think they are about 3 99 something like that. I bought mine in Sainsbury's, um, but you can get them online. So again, I'll link them down in the description. The next one is Slightly Beauty. So as you may or may not know, I have hair extensions. Um, they are natural hair, hair extensions. My hair finishes about here. This is extensions. I have to be quite careful what hair products and what brushes that I use because they are all bonded in. So I can't run a sharp brush through this section. But the ends of my hair get super tangled. Now, my daughter and I have both been using wet brushes for a long, long time to get the tangles out. They're much much better than traditional tangle teasers. Teasers? Teasers. Um, we've always been a big fan of tangle teasers, but the wet brush I find is even better. You can use it wet or dry, and we've both got big versions of them that we use every single day. But when I was in my hairdressers the other day, these were on the counter, and I thought, oh, that looks cute, what is it? So, it's a little mini travel wet brush. You open it up, there's a little mirror in the handle, which is quite handy got a rubber bit on the back which you push in and out pop your bristles but this is almost a full size brush it's not teeny teeny tiny so you can just do your ends or in Izzy's case she does her whole head um, and then when you're finished pop it back in click it back up and chuck it in your handbag and you can see it's about the size of my hand I've got quite small hands as well Absolutely love it. Um, if you do get tangly hair, these are brilliant and I'm definitely gonna have this in my travel bag when we're on holiday because it's perfect round the pool for getting those tangles out of wet hair because there's nothing worse than going swimming, sitting in the sunshine, letting your hair dry and then all of those yucky swimming pool tangles are just stuck in your hair. Let me lower you down. That's better. 
better I was getting a neck ache right the next thing is things that I love but the reason I love it is because my son loves it and the reason my son loves it is because it helps him sleep now recently as he's got older um, Tom has had real issues falling asleep he never used to he used to be able to just go out the minute he went to bed but I think now that he's older and he's at senior school he's got lots of things going around in his head and he finds it quite hard to fall asleep he had been using a little miniature version of this which I'd got free when I went to a hotel and he swore by it so although it's expensive I decided I would buy him a full-size bottle and it is the deep sleep pillow spray by this works and it does work so it smells really nice it goes a long way although this is only a 75 ml bottle we've had this for about a month and it still feels pretty full to me a couple of squirts on his pillow before he goes to bed whether it's psychological or not i don't care he's falling asleep really quickly and it smells really nice too so again i'll pop a link for that down below the next thing is a food thing so as you may or may not know i try my best to be as good as i can be with what i eat but i still don't let myself go without i like chocolate i like sweets i like cheese and i love my wine but i do have to eat it within reason so that means i'm always on the lookout for snacks that are naughty but not too naughty and this is the latest one that i've discovered I've only got the box, I haven't got any actually at the moment, I need to buy some more, but they are small chocolate brownies by Fibre One. Now they are absolutely delicious, really chocolatey and they feel really, really naughty when you eat them. But the best bit is that they are only 87 calories each. So if like me you're a calorie counter, you'll know that for a snack and something a bit naughty, that's not bad. So I love these. You can get these in all the major supermarkets and they're often on special offer. Now they do do a lemon version and I got them, they're all right. I've eaten them all, but I won't be rushing to buy them again. Not quite so nice, but if you love your chocolate, these are lovely, really, really chocolatey. And as I say, for 87 calories, they're worth the treat. And the next thing I want to show you is some makeup. Now, I don't wear a lot of makeup. I've got no makeup on at all at the moment. Um, in fact, I'm having a bit of a spotty time at the moment, so I'm deciding to be makeup free to try and help my skin a little bit. But when I do wear makeup, I like to experiment and I like to play a little bit. And I'd been watching lots of different YouTube channels and many, many, many people, um, influencers, shall we say, had been sharing about the latest ColourPop Cosmetics partnership with with Zoe Sugg or Zoella. So she's released a range called Brunch Date. It is only available in the States, but you can order it online and they do ship to the UK. Um, they're cunning though, because they say the shipping's free, um, but it's not. They've kind of put the VAT in with the tax and it's all a bit confusing. Um, but anyway, you're looking at a fair amount of money if you want to order this, but it's worth it. So I actually bought what they call the PR pack, which is the entire range of this particular brunch date set in one makeup bag. Now I've subsequently lost the makeup bag. It went walkies after our table sale that we had at BTHQ the other week. So I'm not sure who has it, but it's gone. So all I can do is show you a picture here of what the brunch date set looks like this is the PR set and it's got lots of things in it there's a couple of um, liquid eyeshadows which are gorgeous one is gold and one is rose gold perfect um, there are three sets of lip stain and matching lip liner there's a blusher a highlighter um, two eyeliners and also the eye palette. I'm just gonna show you three of the products today, which are the products that I'm using the most and I absolutely love. So the first one is the main palette. This is the brunch date palette. There are colors in here that at first I thought I would never ever use, but when you put them together and when you try them, they're gorgeous. So, ta-da! Oh, look, you can see my camera. With the exception of this blue, which I don't think I will ever use, all of the other ones I have used so far, there's this gorgeous light one up here which is called Champagne Toast which makes for a really lovely highlight just at the top here or just in at your waterline down there which is gorgeous. 
there's some really lovely browns with a little bit of shimmer but not a lot and then there's some other gorgeous ones like skinny latte and cinnamon sugar that have got a real lovely pigment to them and a glitter to them um, including this lovely one I love this it's called Sunday fun day and it's like a pinky one and I've just popped like a tiny bit just here of that and it just gives you a really nice pop. And it's interesting because I found myself wearing a lot more peachy and orangey colours using this palette than I ever normally would. And quite a few of the garments that I've bought from the high street recently have got that kind of corally peachy colour in them. And I'm really loving experimenting with this. Every time I do my eyes I do them differently and every time I'm really really happy with the results. And it's super quick to use because it's quite heavily pigmented as well. A little goes a very long way. So you will need a blending brush if you're going to be working with these so that you can blend all the colours into each other. But highly recommend it. I really, really love it and well worth buying. I will pop the links down below to the PR pack. It will be the American site unless I can find that there is now a UK based supplier. So there's two other products in the pack that I particularly like. The next one is the blusher. Now again, I've always used kind of browny, earthy tones and I've always used blusher as a bit of a contour long before contouring became in fashion and I'd just run it along here. But this is something that really surprised me. This is really girly. It's a super pink blusher but it looks so nice on it. It gives you a real rosy cheeked glow and I love it absolutely addicted and I now use this as my everyday blusher when I wear makeup just day to day. Likewise another colour that I've never worn, I've always worn brownie coloured lipsticks, is a pink lipstick. Now this is gorgeous, it's called Shade Me and it is a lovely lovely pink, it goes on beautifully, it's a real liquid liner, in fact let me show you. You can see it goes on quite wet and it dries. Fairly quickly, you do have to talk like this for a bit. Let it dry, I won't blot your lips together. <laughs> but you can see it's a really lovely colour. It's kind of pinky, but pinky brownie. And, and it's definitely an everyday lipstick. And this lasts all day. I can put this on at nine o'clock in the morning and it is still on at four o'clock in the afternoon and I can eat my lunch and drink tea as well. It's really, really good. And it's really moisturizing as well. A lot of these matte lipsticks um, and the stains tend to really dry my lips, but I'm not finding that at all with this. It's really, really lovely. So I can highly recommend it. There was two other colours that came in the set and I have to admit I don't like them. One of them was a bright red. Now some reds suit me but not many um, and this particular red was really really pillar boxy red and it just didn't look nice. And the other one I was disappointed about. It looked like a kind of beigey brown but actually it was really peachy and it did nothing for my skin tone whatsoever. It kind of made me look a bit like a ghost. So those two I'm going to be popping onto eBay um, and along with, what else was I going to get rid of that I didn't want? I think it was just those two. Oh, those two and the highlighter. The highlighter is really nice, don't get me wrong, but I've got lots of highlighters and I love my MAC highlighter. So I was just going to pop those on eBay as a, a package. But if I'd bought all of the items that I have liked separately, I would have spent a lot more money than if I'd have bought the PR pack. So it was well worth buying that and just offloading the things that I wasn't going to use. Now the last thing I want to show you was a gift from one of my clients that I got for my birthday. I absolutely love it. I've used it almost every single day. I'm going to have a look online and see if I can find them so I can link it down below in the description. But if it's not there, then you're going to have to take a trip in the UK anyway to your local garden centre because I think that's the only place I've ever seen them before. Now she bought me this really lovely bag. Now it zips up. It's quite big. Um, but it fits in my bag. It's all zipped up like this as she believed she could, so she did, which is one of my favourite phrases. Um, but when you unzip this, you get, whoop, zip stuck, a really big boxed bottom, look at the bottom on that, zip up, big shopping bag. It's massive. I can get a small shop from the supermarket in that bag. You can see in comparison to my head, 
it's quite a big bag and it folds up really really nicely it's made out of um, quite a tough ripstop fabric um, I'm very tempted to um, buy another one and pull it apart and see if I can work out how it's made because it would be a really great class but then it all just folds back up really easily into its small package so it just lives in my handbag all the time I've tried lots of reusable shopping bags before the little ones that stuff into pouches and look like strawberries and all of those they're just not strong and tough whereas this one is strong and tough it zips up which is great so you can fill it up with all your stuff from Poundland zip it up pop it over your shoulder and away you go down the high street. And it's perfect for those eventualities like Poundland, where you're walking past and you think, I don't need anything, but I'll just go in. And you come out with a massive bag of stuff. I do it all the time, so don't lie, you know you do too. It's disastrous, but it's brilliant. It lives in my handbag, absolutely love it. And as I say, I will try and find them online and if I can, I will have linked it down below in the description. So a real mix match this month. Strange and unusual things that you wouldn't necessarily think you'd find in a likes video um, and other things that are always there like makeup, etc, etc. I'm going to finish just by sharing with you as well what I've been watching. I don't really watch an awful lot of telly. Obviously, I've been watching The Sewing Bee. Absolutely loved that. Watched that live every single night for the whole of the series, which was really good. But I don't watch a lot of telly normally, so much so that my TV actually stayed on BBC One for three weeks because no one used it in between the sewing bee. But I do watch lots of things on Netflix uh, with Mr. Mac and most of my time is spent watching other podcasters and other vloggers on YouTube. I really enjoy getting a bit of YouTube content. But recently, personally, myself, I've been watching a series on Netflix called Working Mums. Uh, it's really good, it's an American series. It's about a group of women who all come together once a week for their kind of baby and toddler group. And um, their children are all sort of little babies, but they're getting to that point where they're maybe three months old or so, and they're thinking about going back to work. Um, obviously in the States, they have a much shorter maternity leave period than we do here in the UK. So they're all at that point where they know they have to go back to work, but they don't want to go back to work or they're desperate to go back to work because they've had enough of kids. It covers all sorts of things um, like postnatal depression, um, it talks about relationships, affairs in the workplace, all sorts of stuff. It's really, really get your teeth into good drama and I'm really enjoying it. I think I'm about eight or nine episodes in, so I'm hoping there's gonna be another series of that available to watch. The other program that I absolutely love and Mr. Mac and I have been watching this together is The Good Doctor. Sorry. The Good Doctor, um, absolutely fantastic program. If you loved House with, St it wasn't Stephen Fry, was it? it was Hugh Laurie. If you loved House and you liked that kind of medical drama where he would really think about things and come across solutions to really weird, complex diseases and illnesses, um, and you like that kind of humour and the relationship between the characters, etc., then you will love The Good Doctor. It's basically all about a doctor or a trainee surgeon called Sean, and he has autism, um, but in a very, very big, in-depth kind of way. His people skills are next to zero, but his brain is amazing. And he is able to solve complex medical problems and complex medical conditions, but how he communicates this with his patients doesn't always go to plan. And it's quite funny, it's sad, at the same time it's clever, it's a really good drama. So if you want to watch something and really get your teeth into a good drama, I can highly recommend The Good Doctor. So. That's everything I've got to show you today. I will be back next time I have a decent amount of stuff that I want to share with you. So thank you very much for watching. As always, all links that I can find will be in the description. Please do give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and leave me some comments. I try and reply to all my comments if I can. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.